ambassador for the NFGM network. We are currently in the very hot and humid Kampala, Uganda. It's been a fun-packed two days sharing stories on activism, leadership, sisterhood, and that's why I've got my very lovely big sister here with me to share some insight on some very taboo topics but I think it's very important that we address these these issues um, and I think we have a safe space to discuss some of the, the themes today. Yeah definitely. So would you like to introduce yourself? Well yes, um, <laughs> hi everybody, my name is uh, Amina Ali and I am from Tanzania. I work for an organisation called Children's Dignity Forum and uh, we basically work to empower um, and reinforce the rights of children um, uh, to eradicate child marriage, FGM and teenage pregnancy. So, first question, what do you think makes an ideal woman in today's society? Uh, if you were to ask me as a feminist, I would definitely say an ideal woman is resilient, she's powerful, but when I look at in the broader context of in the society I'm living in, it's very patriarchal, it's very white, male, middle class dominated. And I think for a woman, I think we are expected to be submissive. I think we are kind of controlled in, um, in the path we want to take in life. Like, um, I feel like our destinies are already written for us. And a lot of that is conforming to what men want and making sure that the power divide is, is still there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, I won't get far away from what you said about who's the ideal woman. I feel that um, as women, and because we have been always been subjected to being submissive and always being um, some sort of a pillar, at home, yeah, we multitask and do anything, so we're basically resilient. Mm -hmm. That's that's the key word. We're resilient, we bounce back, mm -hmm. and um, we are nurturing, and um, we we are the mothers to basically everybody. Yeah, <laughs> you know, from a very young age, we're told to shrink ourselves, so there is culture in one hand, and then there is um. There is policies that are so misogynistic in the other. So it's like you're in a space where you have to pretend in terms of culture um, there are some expectations of the woman. So from a very young age we are we are limited in that sense. So we have this narrow uh, perspective of who we are supposed to be, we don't really live up to our potential. And when we do, then we are rebels. Yeah, mm -hmm. we are rebels. We are rebels, and we are hard-headed, and we are supposedly adopting to Western culture. And I think as well, like just even living in the UK, but being proud of African roots, I feel like I have a conflict of of how I should act, like present myself who I should be because I feel like I am empowered to, to you know to live up to my potential I have opportunities at my disposal but at the same time I'm like oh what would my grandma say if I was to talk about LGBT what would my grandma say if I was to talk specifically about my vagina and why FGM is wrong so I, I think I'm constantly trying to define what the ideal woman is. Okay, so next question. Do you believe um, as an African or as a black woman um, that we have the freedom to express our sexuality even though um, we are the most sexualized race? I look at FGM and I ask, where did it come from? Mm -hmm. And then all I get is, you know, when people are trying to justify it is that or it, um, it, it, uh, it prevents promiscuity. So basically, all that is controlling a woman's desire yeah. or a woman's ability to explore her sexuality. Mm -hmm. I feel like we are still, we're still limiting women to live who they really are. So we, we, are, we are putting so much pressure and politicizing on women but not really doing that 
for the for the other for the other for the other side. It's like you're either a poor or you're a virgin. Exactly. There's no in between. It's not like you can never sleep with a man for you to feel empowered, for you to feel good about yourself. It's always about this like what were you saying earlier about it's like women are like toilets. <laughs> when they're ready to like do their business, do their business, and then they... And then they go, exactly. Yeah. You're just there, you're on the receiving end, so you really have no right to either say it's pleasurable, mm -hmm. and I I would like it in a different way. So there's, there's really not that in between. We have a choice, but then when we choose this side, there's like <laughs> backlash, when we go this way, we're not happy. Yeah. So it's like, it's, it's really frustrating. <laughs> so I think that leads to like, that's a good point to lead on to our last question. And our last question is, what advice would you give to a woman or a girl who is struggling with her identity or they are struggling to conform to societal expectations? I think self-discovery. I think a lot of times we get excited about who we want to be and we haven't quite navigated that yet. We kind of look at the people and we're like, Oh, but she's doing this and she's doing that and that looks great but we haven't like uh, Dr. Mariam was saying earlier she was like you need to have a vision yeah. and your vision is separate is separate to your ambition mm -hmm. and I think that a lot of people are ambitious a lot of women are ambitious they're like I aspire to be this confident mm -hmm. to talk about sexual rights mm -hmm. I aspire to be this confident to talk about my vagina but they they don't have a vision they don't really know how to navigate that journey mm -hmm. and I think that it goes back to self-reflecting um, definitely you definitely need to have reflection time. Definitely. Yes. I think what I, what I would do is just live my truth. And I encourage people to live their truth because that's the only thing you can do. Life is too short for you to just uh, pretend. At the end of the day, it's about you and how you feel. So if it's okay for you, then the rest of the world should adjust. Yeah? And remember, where your rights um, end, another rights, another person's rights begin. So try as much as possible. So be who you are. Be authentic. I think for me, what's helped me live my truth and, and be honest about what I want is definitely finding a sister. Mm, yeah, um, and I think sometimes we are like, oh, nobody thinks like me, but we're not actively looking for those spaces where they occupy like like minded women. And then for you, young women as well, or for us rather, because I want to think we're young, as young yeah. women. <laughs> Thank you.